Good morning, everybody. I'm glad you're joining me today to hear another part of God's story. Before we look in our story basket and open our Bibles, let's get ourselves ready to hear God's word. Maybe at home you want to get some paper and crayons or your blocks or your Legos so you can hear God's word and respond to it at the end. Whenever you have what you need and you're ready to go, let's get our bodies, our hearts, and our minds ready to hear God's word by singing our Bible words. Will you please sing with me? Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am God. Let's hear the word of the Lord together. So the first thing in my basket, as always, is my Bible. And our Bibles are God's word. And it's full of stories about who God is, how we can know and love and serve God, stories about God's people, and stories about Jesus. This week we're continuing to be in the New Testament, so at the end of our Bibles, towards the back, and we're in the book of Matthew, which is the first book and one of the four Gospels. And our story is in three parts today. We are going to be in Matthew chapter 4, so these words right here. And then we're going to flip over to another page, put my bookmark in so I don't lose where we are. And we're going to tell a little bit of Matthew chapter 9 and part of Matthew chapter 10. So the next thing that is in my basket, as you may have guessed, is our purple cloth. And friends at home, I hope you're telling those around you what the purple means. The purple represents Jesus. And the purple is such a fancy color that we know important people, kings and queens, and important teachers wore a long time ago, so the purple helps us remember that. It's Jesus is our king. And we, I have a phrase I've been using these last few weeks to help us when we think of the purple, and we say it's the mystery of Jesus. And to help us learn about the mystery of who Jesus is, we have been asking a question for these last couple weeks, and we will continue to until Easter. Friends, do you remember what this question is? That's right. Who is Jesus? Each week as we're telling these stories about Jesus' life and ministry, we are learning things about who Jesus is and how we can answer this question. So I'm going to set our question to the side and we'll come back to it and see what our answers are for today. So we are starting with Jesus. And last we saw him, he had just been baptized by John in the Jordan River. And the Spirit of God came down and sat on him in a dove. And the voice of God said, this is my son with who I am well pleased. And so now Jesus is ready to start his ministry, to take his message to God's people. But I wonder if Jesus wants to do it alone. I wonder if he needs some friends to go with him. So today we're going to meet the friends that Jesus chooses to go with him to share this message to the world. I wonder... What kind of friends is Jesus looking for? I wonder if he's going to pick people who are big and strong and carry heavy things, or people who are short and can run quick and deliver messages. I wonder if Jesus is going to choose kind people, people everybody likes. Who do you think Jesus is going to choose to be his friend on this journey? So I have one more thing to set out before we start to hear our story, and I have this piece of blue with us. And I would bet most of my friends at home are telling their families and those around them that the blue is water, and you're right. Today our blue is the Sea of Galilee. So a sea is not as big of an ocean, but it's bigger than a lake. So it's just this big body of water, and it's in the area that Jesus lives. And so he's going to meet some friends there along the Sea of Galilee. And to hear our story, I am going to read from us the Jesus Storybook Bible. So this, is a, this book contains God's Word. It's part of God's Word, but it's written in a way that we can hear it differently and maybe understand something different. So I would like to read to you today from here. Jesus left the desert and set about the great rescue he was going to get God's people back. But first, he needed to find some helpers and friends. He had a lot to do. He would need some people to help him. Who would make good helpers? Do you think clever ones? Rich ones? 
strong, important ones? Some people might think so, but I'm sure by now you don't need me to tell you they'd be wrong. Because the people of God, because the people God uses don't have to know a lot of things or have a lot of, a lot of money. They just need him a lot. So one day Jesus was walking by the Sea of Galilee when he saw some brothers and friends mending their nets. They were poor fishermen. So let's get out our friends. A couple of people. They might not stand up today, so we're just going to lay them out. So there are some friends working by the Sea of Galilee with their nets. And Jesus has something special to tell them. Jesus called out to them and said, let's go. Peter, Andrew, James, and John looked up at this man on the shore, and they couldn't explain it. Their boats needed to be put away, their nets needed mending, fish were still wriggling on the shore, but something about this stranger made them just drop their nets and their fish, leave their boats and everything and follow him. This God man was like no one they had ever met. When they looked at Jesus, their hearts filled up with wonderful forever sort of happiness and inside it was as if they were running free in an open field. Hmm. I wonder what it's like for these men to just leave their boats, leave everything they own to follow Jesus. I wonder if this was an easy choice or a hard choice. So let's see what happens next. Jesus asked 12 men to be his helpers. Let's get all 12 out and I'll tell you their names. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So he chose twelve men to be his helpers and here are their names. Peter, Andrew, James, and John, Matthew, Philip, Bartholomew, Thomas, another James, Simon, Thaddeus, and Judas. Meeting Jesus would change them forever. So these are the friends that Jesus chose to go with him on his mission. I wonder what was special about these men. I wonder what it was like on their first days together. What kind of questions did they ask? What kind of things did they see? What was it like to leave everything they owned and they knew to follow Jesus? From the story, do you think these were people that everyone would expect to be Jesus' friends? Some of them were fishermen, and like the Bible tells us, they didn't have a lot of money. They probably smelled like the sea and the fish. One of these followers, the Bible tells us, that he was a tax collector. So Matthew was a tax collector. Here's the money. And his job was to take money from God's people to give to the rulers of their area. And some tax collectors, they took more money than they needed to keep for themselves. So these people, those tax collectors, I don't think they would be liked. And I don't know if people would expect Matthew to be a follower of Jesus. So we've got our 12 disciples and they are about to go on a journey with Jesus. And in the book of Matthew in chapter 10, Jesus tells the disciples that this journey, it might not be easy. We're gonna go some places where they do not want us, where they do not like us. And some places we're gonna go, they're gonna welcome us in. And he gave him special instructions about what money to take or not to take and where to stay and what to do. But the Spirit of God gave them powers. The Bible tells us in chapter 10, it says, 
Jesus called the 12 disciples to come to him. He gave them authority to drive out evil spirits and to heal every illness and sickness. And as we continue with Jesus, we are going to see that happen. So let's say all the names of the 12 disciples together. I wonder if we can learn these names as we're traveling with Jesus. So we have Peter, which some Bibles call him Simon Peter, James, and Andrew, and John. So James and John are brothers. Bartholomew, uh, Simon, Philip, James, we have two James, Matthew the tax collector, Judas, which friends you might know what Judas ends up doing one of these days, Thaddeus, and Thomas. So I wonder if we can learn all of those names. And those are the names of our 12 disciples. So each week, for the last couple weeks, I've been asking the question, who is Jesus? And I've been adding them to my journal. And I've been drawing a picture and writing some questions and some words about I learn who Jesus is. Maybe you've done it at home too. So here is my entry for today. And friends, remember, I am not a wonderful artist, but I still like to draw. So I just drew stick figures today to represent the 12 followers of Jesus, the 12 disciples that he chose. And the words that stuck in my head in today's story is that Jesus calls them and says, I will make you fishers of people. I wonder what that means. I'm sure the fishermen are thinking, I catch fish, but what does it mean to catch people? We're going to hear more about that. So I want to remember that, and I want to think about this this week. And my answers to the question of who Jesus is today, I answered by saying, Jesus has a message for the world. Jesus also chooses friends to go with him. So we saw him choose his 12 friends today. And some of my wonder questions are, I wonder why Jesus chose these friends. And I wonder if it was easy for Jesus' friends to leave everything they had, their family and their friends and their money and their jobs, to follow Jesus. And like I asked a minute ago, I wonder what it was like among these 12 well, we are going to leave Jesus and the 12 disciples here today, and we will continue on our journey with them next week. Friends, make your picture. Ask, answer the question of who Jesus is for you with your family today. Love God with your whole heart this week. I'll see you next time. Bye, everybody.